All right, folks, so we're going to talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, I have Eric on for this impression here because I have zero experience with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2. Uh, this one is coming exclusive to Nintendo Switch. We both got to play it. Uh, the gameplay you're seeing on screen is Eric playing it because he is a badass when it comes to this game. I don't know why. He just is. And we're also big Marvel fans here. So, first off, Eric, I'm going to toss it to you. Like, I want to know, how do you think this game feels compared to 1 and 2? Because we've talked in the past about how 2 wasn't really great. 1 was awesome. So, where's this feeling? It's a whole new development team, exclusive to Switch. How, what, are, what are your thoughts on this? I'm definitely getting a more towards a 1 feel than I am a 2 feel. Um, yeah, the, the gameplay is nice and smooth. Um... Character switching is fantastic. It's just like normal. Um, it it plays like you figure a multi, or Marvel Ultimate Alliance game would if you've played it in the past. Well, okay, and how is that? Because I think a lot of our audience probably hasn't touched it because it's first time it's ever been on a Nintendo platform. I do recommend it if you haven't. Um, but uh, it, it's a lot of there's a lot of things going on on screen as you could probably tell. <laughs> um, it, it's it's God, how do you explain it? I don't know how to explain it. I've I never played a game like it before. So. Right, right. It, there's a lot of just random button pressing in a way. Um, well, I mean, there, there, there is, there is. Um, it, this game, to me, it's it's better played with friends. Um, I've noticed that when I was doing my super strikes or whatever they call whatever they're called again, I don't remember exactly what they're called. Um, that it was doing them. Um, by myself, uh, and when when uh, you you're playing with friends and stuff, you can kind of time that up, and it'll kind of chain and um, make it make it a little bit better. I talk about the moves when they combine together to do like a special. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't remember those. All, I, I don't know if it's, I think they're just like I don't know you, if they're the you, ultimate moves. You played or, solo. Yep. And I played with two other people. Well, actually, three other people. Uh, so I played with the full four. Um, what I actually noticed is. Uh, as much as you can time it up with other people, it felt like just rewatching your footage. Like it was easier to do it in solo play because you relied on multiple people agreeing they want to use it at that time. And if one person triggers it and the other people don't want to do it, that person can no longer join in it anymore. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to build it back up. Um, but that, I mean, that's more of a. I think I, you're running into the more of the. You're with a random group of people. Well, here's the thing. In games like this, even if I'm not with a random group of people, I'm just not caring what other people are doing. Honestly, that's like how I am with, with most co Unless it's like a puzzle where you need to like communicate. It, this this game to me, I mean, I it, I liken it to Hyrule Warriors, but it's not like Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is it's hack and slash, and there is. I guess There's... hack and slash elements to this. Yeah, but I won't call it a hack and slash because. There's a lot of different intricacies with the strategies, uh, with the opponents on screen. You have, your move sets are crazy. There's an insane amount of moves. Yes, yes, there is. Um, and hopefully, there's more because I mean, in one there was a ton of moves that you can that you could pick and choose from. Um, you can change rematch your characters your buttons. on the fly. You could change your characters on the fly. Well, well, at, in, at, in this one there were set points where um, blue, no, that, blue that, circles on the yep. ground where you could change out your party yep, shield points. Yep, yep, uh, but. Uh, there were a lot of moments in there uh, where um, it said, hey, hit this button and you can switch to this other character. And it's like, okay. Yep. Yeah, if you're playing solo or with a friend, you can you can yeah. jump to a non, non-occupied non character. Basically, it, that's similar uh, to you know, Hyrule Warriors or whatever. You could switch between the heroes, and you could do that in this game as well. There's just only ever four on screen at once. Right. Unless certain cutscenes, of course, might have, like the whole group. But um, So... Uh, what about this style of gameplay appeals to you? Because I have never touched this before, and I came away with, I kind of want to get it. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just because I was playing as Spider-Man and playing as, you know, all, all these different characters that I love from the Marvel Universe, uh, or if it's actually because the game is good. So... 
Yeah, no, I, I, I do definitely think that if you are a Marvel fan, that does play into it. I'm a huge Marvel um, fan. So. Right, right, right. Um, that that does play into it. I'm a massive Marvel fan as well. Um, so th- that is part of it. But uh, no, the gameplay, I, again, it, it's hard to describe. I mean, you're, you're seeing it right now on screen. But well, you run around as characters. A lot, a lot of it's top-down perspective. Um, you know, the, there's a, the camera moves and, and shifts at different points, and you can kind of free move it a little bit if you're in single player. But if you're if you're definitely playing with others, it's almost always a fixed top down or at like a side angle. It's like from three quarters above. almost. Yeah, it, it's not it, it's not direct top down. It's kind of a there are areas where it's direct top down when you get yeah. in the alleys. Yeah. Um, but again, it all changes um, d- depending on you know what's going on around you in the environments. A lot of destructibles in the environments as well. <laughs> Everything's a destructible. A lot of destructibles. Um, well, that's how you get your health back and and uh, part of your uh, move sets and stuff like that. Or built off of I don't know if it's like mana or something kind of similar in in feeling of that. Yeah. Um, so you know that's you break stuff and you get these. At least I, th- I I'd have to go back and rewatch to make sure that the orbs are still there because that's what it was in the first two were these yeah, like cool blue and red orbs. orbs that were that you just collect and that's that's how you built up your it allowed you to run your moves and your your uh, your gain health back. Yeah. And, you know, you're running around, and this isn't like in Zelda where you hold on a button to aim at someone. Uh, you just face towards them, and it kind of auto-aims for you. Because there's certain, like, special attacks you have. Um, as an example, when I was playing with, ah, what's his name? Um, Star-Lord. Uh, he has, like, a tornado ability. Um, and uh, it would just randomly, you know, it wouldn't random, but if you're facing toward the target, you could just fire off the tornado. He also had, like, a flamethrower ability that was really cool. Uh, and everyone has, like, their own abilities. And I actually thought one neat thing we'll start learning is he can kind of also be Iron Man a little bit because he can kind of, like, fly. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I wasn't quite sure on that one, but... Well, know. he does it in the movies. Yeah. He just doesn't yeah. do it for those prolonged... Right. Right, like it, like here it's prolonged yeah. flight, and it's kind of no. like it, uh, he maybe can do that, but he never actually does that. Yeah. In the, maybe in the comics, I don't uh, know. Honestly, he though, doesn't shoot lasers from his hands, so there you have that part. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> though, flight is the way to go. It's it's a little bit faster travel, well, at least from course, what I found. Of course, it is. So. Um, and obviously, with flight, it's easier. You know, you don't have to always jump over certain things, and it, it's just it's more convenient. But um, what, what I actually thought was cool, because I played... I, did you get to play with any different characters? Or I did, played with just the, just the uh, four. It was Star-Lord, Captain America, Thor, and Wolverine. So did they feel any different when you switched in different places? Because as you said, some fly, some are grounded. Some have like magic abilities, some are melee. <sighs> no, they, they all... To a certain extent, it's all kind of similar. Um... I mean, I guess you do have your 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 ranged versus your melee, mm-hmm. but I mean, it all it's all kind of you know you have your strong attack, your weak attack, and then you have your your kind of special attacks. That yeah, you so there's so. there's you, you have a str- you have two buttons uh, for attacking what, just normal attacks, which is which they literally describe it as normal and strong. Uh, obviously, the strong attacks are slower, but do more damage. Normal attacks are usually quicker, but do less damage. And you can, in this demo... There's, there's combos. You yeah, can definitely throw yeah. combos. In this demo, you can basically get away with just doing that. You don't really have to use anything else. It just feels like you're not really playing the game if you're just doing it. It's kind of like a hardware Wars, so you could just mash A and, and get through everything. But it's more fun to do combos. It's more fun to use some of your special abilities and your spin attacks and all that. Um, and I, what was neat about um, where, where you can combine the, the, the abilities together for like these ultra attacks or whatever they're called um, is that they kind of clear out the whole screen. Even when you're facing like a boss, it, like we almost killed the boss just doing one of them. Now, granted, yeah. this is a demo, early right. boss. Right. I expect later fights not to yeah, like, go no, down off sure. one of those. Like, no. Um. Yeah, no, if you, the thing is, is you can find a wicked combo. Um, back in the day, my friend Chris and I, we ran with generally the f- four. I, I, I was Silver Surfer, uh, Human Torch, uh, Spider-Woman, and, um, God, I can't remember the fourth one, but oh my God. You would just go into a room and you could chain those and it would just wreck. 
and I'm sure there's a few different combos, and I know there's different te- different teams like the women of uh, the MCU. Yeah, there's... uh, they're adding. And by the way, all this DLC they have come is free. That's awesome. So, like Fantastic Four is coming in the future, all that stuff. Um, I I think it's pretty exciting. I don't know how well this game's going to perform from a sales perspective. Again, first time on a Nintendo platform, it's kind of an IP that. I kind of got the feeling at E3, some people didn't really care about. There was a zillion demo stations for it, and... Six. Yeah, well, no, 12. Three per side. And there was two oh, sets yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah so right. there was a lot of demo stations, and you can almost always walk up and just play it. Granted, it is a game that can have up to four players, so that helps as well. Yeah. Really yeah. speed things up, whereas like the Hollow Knight line was crazy, but again, it's single player. Um, but still... I'm very curious on what the perception... Actually, I'm really curious about you guys out there watching this video. You saw the gameplay. Um, it's actually our top view gameplay video from the show at the time of recording this anyways. Uh, and I, I really want to know your guys' thoughts on what you're seeing both in our video and other videos you've seen in Nintendo Trios feature. Because right now, I am sold on buying this game day one. And it comes out, I believe, July 19th, uh, around that time. And, man, I... It, granted, obviously... If you're not a Marvel fan, you know, not an MCU fan, probably not going to be the game for you because it's a superhero brawl brawler game, I guess is a good way to describe it. Uh, but assuming that there is a lot of content here, um, I am so sold on this. And granted, you have to remember there's progression in here. So uh, in the demo, we had a ton of characters available to us. That's not really how it's going to work. Um, when you first get it, they've already explained how it kind of, kind of starts out with Guardians of the Galaxy and some other things, and you kind of jump around. You don't have all of them available to you all the time, um, but there obviously is a point in the game where you maybe you do. I don't, I don't know what the, uh, I, I, we know the general just the story revolving around the stones and everything, um, the Infinity Stones, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, um, with the characters, a lot of times you'll you'll do things. Um, well, at least in the first one, you had to go find their their statue in order to unlock them. So they're they're you get a handful to begin with, and then you, they're generally unlockable. I don't know the unlock mechanics in this game. I don't if know there if there is any, unlock yeah, mechanics in this game. The way they described it when they were talking about it, at least what I saw was um, that you know I, I didn't listen specifically on if they're unlocked, but it felt like um, the story is linear, and you just get the characters as the story goes. That, that's possible. Um, and I, I'm actually okay with that since so it revolves around the Infinity Stones, and we all know each each Infinity Stone kind of has its own MCU thing revolving around it with certain characters. Certain characters, so yeah. I guess it would make sense as you're progressing story. And again, I think a lot of this also it's releasing around the time that Spider Man does the movie, right? Um, that's the end of Phase Three or Phase Four, or whatever it is with the MCU. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, but guys, let me know your thoughts on it. Eric, thank you so much for, for hopping in and at least give me some thoughts as someone who actually likes the game. Is there yeah. anything else you want to say about it before we no, wrap I, it up? I really do wish I would have hopped back in line and played it one more time just to kind of refresh it. And But no, from my initial playthrough and from what I can actually remember of it, we've played a lot of games <laughs> um, in between. Yeah, you put a lot of games um, in E3, man. A lot of, oh, lot of games boy. in between. Um, but it, it does feel... It's very smooth gameplay. It's very one feeling. And I'm hoping the story is as good as one. And I hope they kind of go back that direction. Uh, what what was that story like, for those who might not know? Oh, God. You don't have to go through the whole story. Just, like, what what made you enjoy the way that story was told? Um, God, there was... I mean, besides... Because this one feels like it's just going through the whole gambit. It's going infinity so crazy here. Right, 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 right. Um, I mean, yeah, you'd go through and play different levels, and you would kind of follow an arc. I can't remember the arc. I Yeah, it's okay. You don't I, remember. Just, like, what about but, the, the way that st- they approach that story? Like, you know, don't tell what the story is. If you guys want to know, go play the game. But, um, got it. Like, compared know. to two, like, why why did you like the way well, one was told versus it was, two? <laughs> Or was it just... A- it was more gameplay than actual story. Because I remember 2, I know 2 is, is more um, Civil War. Yes. Um, yes. But they took a lot of the RPG elements away from it. They dumbed it down. They they, they only they took away a lot of movesets. And it's like, 
come on, guys. That's what made the first game. Um, the first game is it's more of a... I remember it now. It's it's kind of the Thor-esque Valhalla, Norse, Norse yeah. mythology, um, that type of stuff. Um, and then, you know, you, you get to your... You go back to, like, the... Um, your Stark Tower and stuff like that, and then there'd be, like, mini-games, side-games. I think they have that in this one as well, in 3. Um, but then you can go in and, like, actually, they they have, like, uh, almost, like, quizzes. Okay. And stuff like that, so you learn even more about some of the details with the within the mythology and within the different characters and stuff like that. Um, it, it just tied really well together. And, and then when they got to the second one, like I said, they kind of took away a lot of the movesets. And it, it it played fine, but it just felt it wasn't the same. Sure. And I think all of us have experiences that with games where certain games aren't the same. Um, I mean, just speaking from personal experience, even though I ended up liking this, Zelda 2 was almost nothing like Zelda 1. And I like Zelda 2 better. Most people like Zelda 1 better. Most people prefer most of the rest of the Zelda series over those games, which is fine. Uh, but that's just that's just how things go sometimes. Um, well, I'm glad the series is coming back. I'm you know obviously I'm thrilled it's coming to Switch. I mean it's exclusive to the Switch. I don't really care that it's exclusive because I don't really care about exclusives. I know that might seem blasphemy as a Nintendo fan. I don't care if, if every if Xbox and PlayStation get to play Mario games. Why do I care about that? As long as I get them. I just care about the games and them being awesome. And this is one of the many awesome games we played at E3 and came away impressed. I'm trying to think if there was even a game I wasn't impressed with playing. Um, I think the only one is the one I'm not going to be talking about. <laughs> oh, and then again, I don't know that I wasn't impressed. I was just so... Yeah. I, what is this? Anyways, yeah. maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. Right, right. You guys let me know your thoughts on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Eric has one more thought. He put his finger I, up. He's, stop. Hold up. Yeah. I do recommend... It. It's not necessary for this story, but I do recommend going back and playing one and two. Two, like I said, not not as good as one, but not a bad game. I think. Well, I think for most people that pick this up on Switch, it might be the first time playing it, unless you are a long time fan like Eric. Um, what I do like that they did with this one in particular, what it sounds like from what the people I talked to, is it's its own contained story. They almost don't even need to put the three on it. Because they literally right. said, hey, yeah. look, we know what's going on. We're just going to say, screw it, we're going Infinity Stones. Which, of course, is like one of the biggest things, maybe the biggest thing to, to happen in, in the whole Marvel Universe. Which is going to be interesting to see what happens with the MCU. Uh, now that they're kind of wrapped up that part of the MCU. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, that's our prime impression of... <laughs> Wow, Marvel Ultimate name. Alliance 3. And <laughs> apparently a thing I used last year, too. And I oh, just... All right. All right. All right. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more content. We have more E3 impressions coming your way.